Alright, it's good to see you here on YouTube and Facebook Live. Appreciate you being here. And happy Mother's Day to all those who are here or watching in different ways. We appreciate that. Thank you for all the mothers for all the things that you do and who you are. So we appreciate that. And if you'd like to contact us, we have uh, our email address is CorinthChurch1868 at gmail.com. And our mailing address is Box69 Vance. 29163. Send a prayer request, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, we have people who are giving online, so check our website, orthbaptistchurch.org. We'll give you some help and how that you can give if you would like to donate. And so, we're talking about mission moments, and uh, basically, we talked about missions on the go last week, or as you were going with your kids, taking them, grandkids taking them to different places. You can talk to them. They might ask good questions about uh, creation, about different things, and how you can take those questions and steer them to what the, Lord, the Bible says about it, what God has to say about it, things about Jesus. You can you know, take that conversation there. So that's on the go. Any of y'all, your kids talk to you or grandkids talk to you when you're in the car on the go? How many of them don't be quiet? <laughs> I mean, they're just constant. We have a granddaughter like that. It's just pretty constant. Just conversation. Here we go. And uh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. And so, missions on the stop. Now, what does that mean? Well, as you are living your life, you're at home doing different things, use those opportunities to share with your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Use those opportunities to share Jesus with them. When you pray for your food at the table, you can do that. You can pray. They can pray. And uh, remember our granddaughter, we, you know, she likes to pray before we eat. And so one year, she every prayer, I mean from the whole time, the whole year. Dear Jesus, thank you that you were born. Thank you for this food. Amen. And she started praying at Christmas. <laughs> but after she got the dear Jesus, thank you for being born, but that just, she incorporated that. Kept on going with it. And so, uh, you pray, your food, when you're in the house maybe watching programs, things come up, kids have questions, you can answer those questions and steer them. Uh, we have a, uh, we've had it since Emory was, uh, started coming to stay with us, and she has it at home, and she had, we have the same book, uh, we read Bible stories before we go to bed. Of course, we've got to cut it off. Because, you know, we could go to about 10 or 10, 11 o'clock. Read another one. Well, that was short. Let's read another one. <laughs> well, we go to bed. Uh, not necessarily her go to bed. I have to go to bed. So anyway, missions on the stop. Use those opportunities to tell your kids about Jesus, to bring Bible teaching in, make it practical, but use those opportunities. Because... I'm not talking about sitting down and, and preaching a sermon or teaching a 45-minute lesson, but take those opportunities as they come up to use that time to point them toward Jesus. All right, so now, uh, as I said before, um, well, I didn't say this before. Uh, we've been praying for Lisa Leo, Carol Miller's daughter, but she passed away on Friday, if you did not know that. And so we're going to have a memorial service here today at 3 o'clock. If you would like to come and be a part of that, it'll be a, a, just a, a simple memorial service. So that'll be at 3 o'clock today. You can make, I know it's Mother's Day, but if you can do that, the family, it would really encourage the family. That's Lisa Lale, she passed away on Friday. So if you stand, please, we're going to sing. Call the worship. This is from uh, the song One Day. It's uh, number 193. So look at the book. We're just going to sing the chorus. Living, he loved me, dying, he saved me. This is the gospel, right? In just a few words, this chorus. Let's sing it out, the chorus of this song. Here we go. Jesus, you know full well what it's like to have a mom. 
Mary, your mother. And you know what it's like for the moms to, to have times of joy, sadness, grief, different things. But I thank you. I thank you that you, for our moms, I thank you for them and for the strength that they give us and just for the things that they do for us. Many times uh, unseen or unappreciated, but they're there. And I thank you for our moms. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and ask you to continue to bless them as they continue to do their job because as you know, once you have children, <laughs> that job doesn't stop no matter how old they are. So thank you. And thank you that we can honor them today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, stay standing. We're going to sing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And we're going to sing the first three one, verses, one, two, three. Chorus after each verse. So I want you to sing it out. Blessed Assurance. Now, Fanny Crosby wrote this song. Remember, she was blind at a very early age, but yet all the songs that she wrote, praising Jesus, she didn't look at her situation as something that was detrimental. She said, actually, it helped her. It helped her to see the Lord better. And also, to get opportunities she probably would not have had had she had her sight. So, let's sing it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Sing it out good.
and just hug your mom today, no matter how old you are. If your mom's not here, just remember what mom did to you when she was here. And thank y'all for loving moms. And I know y'all gonna go home today. Dads, I'm gonna mention y'all. Y'all are going home and cook with your moms, aren't you? <laughs> I see that now. Okay, I know y'all can do it. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for good Christian mothers. Help our mothers to have complete faith in you and always try to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank y'all for watching Toad. Did y'all enjoy watching Toad? Yes. He wasn't yes. active enough. Uh, he, he wasn't active enough. Uh, Here we go. That's you wanted to dance? Yes.
here and still now. That's what Jesus did for us. And that's what some of you moms feel like some days too, right? Broken and spilled out. You did everything. <coughs> Thank you for being here today. We're going to talk about a mom today. I found this white feather today as I was coming in. It has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to say. So I don't like to see it. I thought about Forrest Gump when I walked saw this. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so Debbie mentioned who was the first mother? Eve. Eve, mother of all living, right? And as some people say, well, God created man first. He was the prototype, so he learned from his mistakes and then he created women. <laughs> right? You know, some people say that. So. All right, how many of y'all have uh, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, in, uh, or you've been in this situation where you took them to school or to daycare? Y'all know that situation? Yes. And you notice that how it works is you cease to become your first name. And you are so-and-so's mom, so-and-so's dad, so-and-so's grandmother, grandfather, right? You lose your identity. You are so-and-so's mother or father or grandmother or grandfather. But you know that it's the same thing in Tanzania and with the Maasai and with the, the, the Bantu-speaking people, the Swahili people. Because we were there. You know, they would call me Daniele. That's my first name. And they would call Pam Pumela. But when they learned who our kids were, who did we become? Baba Timoteo and Mama Timoteo. Timothy's our firstborn. And so you were Baba or Mama, Timoteo. And in Maasai, same thing you think. Oh, really? You know, maybe just there. No, in Maasai, you're, you're Menye Timoteo or Ngoto Timoteo. You lose your identity. And so today we're going to be talking about someone who, I remember us, I think it was Nathan who we coming in. Nathan said, you going to talk about Samson today? I said, no. We'll talk about Samson's mom. You know, Samson had a mom, right? Just say yes. Yes. All right? You going to trust me on this? All right? He, he did have a mom. He had a dad, too. So, in Judges chapter, let's see. Judges chapter 13 is where we're going to be. Judges chapter 13. And actually some other places, too. But, Judges chapter 13, uh, we see a situation where Israel's in a bad spot. And here, here we go. They start off, it says the Israelites again did what was evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Philistines for 40 years. Sounds like the story of Israel, doesn't it? Like a roller coaster ride. You know, they, you know, they worship the Lord, and then it's everything's good. And then they say, ah, you know, you know, let's worship some other gods. Let's check this out. And then they do the downhill slide, and then God says, you're going the wrong way. And God takes the different people and different situations to discipline His people. Any of y'all ever been disciplined? Any of y'all ever been whooped? Uh -huh. Alright, well that's discipline. It's to take you back to where you need to be. So, here is Israel once again doing evil in the sight of the Lord. So God says, alright, you Philistines, I want you to come over and I want you to help me discipline my people. How long did He say? 40 years. 40 years. And so, so they're in some dire circumstances because now, you know, they have these people coming in. They're coming in, they're taking the crops, they're taking the animals, they're, they're doing everything. They're, they're, they're basically subduing the people, just causing all kinds of problems. How many of y'all would be so happy once you got that garden going and it starts producing, you had somebody just come in and take everything? You'd just be so happy, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, that's what happened to them. They plant everything, get it going, vineyard, grapes, all this thing. And then the Philistines come in and just take it off. Take it off. So they're in dire consequences. So, here we go. Then, the Bible says, There was a certain man from Zorah, from the family of Dan, whose name was Manoah. Alright, there's your first character, Manoah. He's from the tribe of Dan. And this is where he's from. Now, he has a wife. His wife was unable to conceive and had no children. 
So not only do we have dire circumstances, the Philistines come in, but Manoah, which means basically a place of rest, that's what his name means. <coughs> he is married, he has a wife, and she has no children. Now that was a shame for the wife, and it was a shame for the father. They had no children, that was a shame. And so dire consequences, Philistines, and then no children. Man, what are we going to do? So, Manoah, I told you his name means place of rest. And he had a wife. Did y'all see her name in there? Did you notice? She's Manoah's wife. You know, wouldn't that be great, Ann? Oh, you're Jay's wife. And you just went around all of, oh, you're Jay's wife. You're Jay's wife. Oh, yeah, you're Jay's wife. Yeah. I do have a name. Good thing I don't get your driver's license. Jay's wife. Oh, I see that. Okay. But, so, she doesn't have an identity or an, she doesn't have an identity, but we don't have a name in Scripture. But, uh, looking at some different things, uh, different Hebrew rabbis and different things that they wrote down, we found out that basically what they consider her name is Zelel Ponet. Zelel Ponet is her name. And basically her name means shade facing. And so the Babylonian rabbis, basically they call her this, and there's a tradition about that. The name affiliates her with the tribe of Judah, since a woman by this name appears in the Judahite lineage in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, in the first four verses. And so what they're looking at, they said, well, this solves a problem. They said a textural problem. In Judges 13.2, Manoah was from Zorah, from a Danite family. But Zorah is mentioned in the book of Joshua, in Joshua 15 and 19, as there are tribal portions of Dan and Judah in that one place. So they're looking at basically Manoah is from the tribe of Dan, but that his mother was of Judahite descent, Thereby putting Samuel, who judged Israel for 20 years, with the Israelite royal tribe of Judah. How about that? And Zelopomen. Now, that's the first name you're going to run out and name your daughter, right? Zelopomen. Yeah. All right. And so, another interpretation of Manoah's wife's name, basically, is Mary, because she saw, we'll see this, she saw an angel of the Lord not once, but twice. And so, basically... The word for angel is zel, literally shadow, but she has it twice in her name because she saw an angel, the same angel, twice. And so, basically, she saw one time in the city, one time in the field. Now, Manoah's wife, also, remember the mother of Samson, is included among the 23 truly upright and righteous women who came from Israel. And the barrenness, you notice she, it says the wife was unable to conceive and have children. So she was barren, no children. And so... The barrenness is actually mentioned in praise of Manoah's wife, since she is among the list of seven renowned barren women who are known in Israel. Sarah, remember her? Whose wife was she? Abraham, okay. You have Rebecca, you have Rachel, Leah, Manoah's wife, Hannah, and Zion. Now you say, what do you mean Zion? Well, in Psalm 113, 9, it says, He sets the childless woman among her household as a happy mother of children. And also, the Midrashic tradition puts Manoah's wife listed as a woman of vow. Pretty good for somebody whose name is not even mentioned in Scripture. Zelopona, you ready? Okay, so, what's happening there? So, we see, she's unable to have kids. And so, here we go. Diatrix. But one day, the angel of the Lord appeared to her as she was out in the field. And you notice that this angel appeared to her. Not to Manoah, but to her. You know any other woman in the Bible that the angel came to her, not her husband at first? Yeah. Who? Mary. Mary, that's right. The angel came to Mary and said, hey, I've got an announcement. I mean, I've got some news for you. And so, came to Mary. And so, this angel came to the woman, Manoah's wife, and said, okay, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. This is the instruction I'm giving you. I, I, I found this. The rabbis, some rabbis assert that Mo, Manoah was an ignoramus. 
who did not even learn scripture while his spouse, his wife, was a righteous woman. So some of you will say, that's why the angel came to Noah's wife. Because he had gone, Ugh. <laughs> So, anyway, came to the woman and he said, all right, the angel of the Lord. Now, some, some translations, angel and Lord is capitalized. <clears throat> what that means is they think that this was called a Christophany. And y'all know what that word is? Man, it just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Christophany. I mean, you see that every day, right? No. No? You don't? <clears throat> Christophany means that they think this was an actual appearance of Jesus Christ before he was born, before he was, became incarnate. And so, the angel of the Lord came to Manoah's wife. What he did was he said, I have an announcement for you. He said, you are going to have a son. Now, she's sitting there, man, I don't have any kids. He said, well, you're going to have a son. Now, he gave her some prenatal instructions. And you all remember going to the doctor and getting those prenatal ins 